Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three up. It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You got a horror Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back relax and enjoy because ladies and gentlemen it's showtime set to do battle for 30 laps the green flag is waving hello again it's wing nation presented by hercules tires ride on our strength talking sprint car racing our favorite time of the week and we are so glad you joined us aaron evernham and steve post we're going to talk to a couple of champs today champ from the uh king of the west narc series yep. dj netto and champ from the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, Sam Hayford Team Jr. So uh, uh, the good news is they won championships. The bad news is we're talking to champions, meaning the season's about to end. Yeah, we're, we're there. We're close. We're there. Yeah, yeah. we're real close. <laughs> yeah. We're real close. We got world finals, and then Babs has a race next week. Yep. So, uh, and then uh, then there's a couple of 360 races, but that's about it. So um, great, great stuff. We're glad you joined us. Oh, by the way. Happy National Redhead Day. Yeah, how about that? Oh, you got your own day. I mean, are you kidding me? Well, when you're only 2% of the world, I mean. Well, you should have your own day when you're only 2% of the world. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So happy. So we're celebrating Redhead Day. Yep. Um, yeah, exactly. I don't know what Presence that means. welcome. Yes. Yeah. yeah send, send, send your gifts. Send your gifts to Aaron, that's for sure. Um, it is uh, It is uh, great, to, uh, great to chat with you. It's World Finals Week, so we're all jacked up about that. Mm-hmm. And it is going to be just an absolute ball. Uh, let's take a look at our classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. And really, the hot topics are going to be our guests. Uh, Texas Motor Speedway Thursday and Friday night, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. It was Tony Stewart presents the Van Core Texas Sprint Car Nationals. Thursday night, how about T Mac? Hi, it was good to see him in Victory good Lane. Good to see him in Victory Lane with the cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah, it was a cowboy up kind of racetrack. And of course, they do cowboy hats and the big uh, longhorns. Oh, yeah. So Terry, and you know Terry loves his trophies. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, so that was, love a trophy? Well, who I doesn't mean, love a trophy? But I mean, Terry as a promoter, he's the yeah, one that started the, the belt. belt. And he's like, he is like a trophy geek. <laughs> I mean, you know, and that belt he was telling us earlier this year oh, uh, yeah. that, that, that Hulk Hogan helped get it designed. The inaugural one. Yeah. So Terry loves unique trophies, and so he had the cowboy hat and the longhorn. <laughs> he was all jacked up about that. 14th career Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour win. 15th different winner this year on the National wow. Tour, so they had a good season. Uh, McCarl, Sam Hayford, Team Jr., and Canadian Dylan Westbrook were on the podium. Friday night it was Scott Boguski. I listened to this race. I love racing, boys. And I was driving back from the dirt track, and I was able to log them on to my phone and, and, and listen to it. This race, Brian Holbert yeah. was the the announcer. This was epic. Yeah, they were in, they were out, they were up, they were down, they were all <laughs> over the place. I saw some video. It looked wild. It's wild. Yeah. When they got done, Scott Baguski picked up his third win of the season. A uh, lot, just slide job after slide mm-hmm. job in this one. Uh, Baguski, Aaron Reitzel, and Tony Stewart were your top three. The 2019 champ, fourth consecutive season, ten wins. Sam Ooh. Hayford Team Jr. The Brodex National Rookie of the Year, John Carney the second, one win, sixth in points as a rookie. So nice. neat, neat stuff. What's going on with the ASCS National Tour? Stockton Dirt Track, the tribute to Gary Patterson, King of the West by Narc Fujitsu Series. Shane Golubek led flag to flag his first win of the season on this tour. Ten different winners. Yeah. So lots of different winners. Golubek, Willie Croft, and DJ Nutter were the podium. We talked about this the last couple of weeks. DJ Neto and Bud Kading tied. Yeah. Dominic Selzy seven points back. Well, DJ Neto got that podium finish. Career first, King of the West Series. 17 top tens in 19 races. No wins. Consistent. Yes, very consistent, very stout. And we're going to talk to DJ Neto. So, neat, neat stuff. And finally, the hot topic maybe of the year was Danny Smith picking <laughs> up the win with the USCS down in Hendry County and that youngster. That youngster being the key word, went to the wing, and then it got bad. Oh, the video. I mean, knowing he was okay. Knowing he was okay. I, yeah, you can go I've to, watched it a few yes, times. I have to, you can go to Speed Shift TV. They have the race video, and it's on the end of it. Okay, go to Speed Shift, their, their Facebook page and everything. Yeah. Okay, uh, Danny goes, and, and I'm the same way. I read his tweet or his Facebook yeah. post to know he was all right before I knew what happened. 
Uh, the youngster. I the, mean, it was legit. Oh, that it was, was a legit was... fall of the wing. <laughs> when he I hit mean, the front wing, when though. When he hit Ooh. the front wing, I thought he's going to, I thought, because he, he landed right on his back, right oh, on the, the I know, the he's engine. had so much trouble with his back. I know he has. I think about that, too. Yeah. And then the wing there, and he got up and shook it off and did victory lane ceremonies. Uh, outstanding yeah. wing dance. The dismount, though, was a little bit suspect. And how about the, uh, you see the post with the, the, Fake yes, cast. But come now, yeah, the fake cast turns out to be fake news, yeah. which I... I like that he keeps this going. I though. know, but you know, I have got to learn, because on our Wing Nation, I run the Twitter on our Wing Nation, I'm like, oh no, sorry to see that. I have got to learn that you, you can't you, believe Danny anything Danny Smith, you got to give Smith. it a minute, yeah. Yeah, you've got He gotta, got Brad Doty, too, pretty good. Yeah, he got Brad Doty, yeah. too, yeah, he got Brad Doty. Uh, Brad Brown used to be, Ivy yeah. Racing did that. Brad's in the, um, he's an athletic trainer at Nebraska, and he says, hmm, Ready to send his help. they haven't used plastic <laughs> casts that. since the 70s. Uh, so, uh, busted him on the fake news. Got me hook, line, yeah. and sinker. Not the first time. I should know with Danny because yeah. I've had multiple times where he's gotten Well, and me. every day he's had a post. I got invited on Dancing, Dancing with, with the stars. stars. I got invited on the gong show. But in, in other news, social media news, how about Darren Pittman's Halloween Oh, my cost? God, did you see that? <laughs> Oh, Shannon Salvato. Mr. Potato thank you, Head. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you, Shannon Saldana. Oh, that video Saldana. of him that walking. That video of him walking. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Shannon Saldana is MVP of the year yeah. for posting that. <sighs> because Darren is MVP for wearing it. Well, Darren is for all. wearing it, yes, in the driver category. Um, she is in the posting yeah. category. But him walking with that Mr. Potato Head. Oh my gosh, that was hysterical! Oh, that was awesome. Oh, you could hear the you could hear Mandy, everyone giggling around. They're just it's dying, like, <laughs> yeah, because he's just like waddling along, back and forth, bobbing along uh, in the wind. Yeah. Um. So yeah, how about that? No, that was funny nice. too. Yeah, I forgot about. It. I'm glad you brought that up. I love uh, I love our racers, and and I love the social media that yeah. we can get a chance to get to know them a little bit. And uh, that Darren Pittman with the costume, that was the best. Oh, my God. Uh, that was spectacular. So, great, great stuff. There you have a Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery. Hot Topics, ClassicInkUSA.com. That's www.ClassicInkUSA.com. Of course, uh, you can go there for your Wing Nation gear. Um, and we have a uh, cha- uh, Crowning the Champion uh, special edition T-shirt that we've got. So, you can go to WingNation.com and link to them. Or Classic Ink has that. And uh, we can do that. Of course, it's that time of year, race teams, when you need to start lining up your 2020 apparel. And uh, you can do that at www.classicinkusa.com. Uh, now, we talked about this a little bit ago, talking about the big race in Texas, the Lucas Oil ASCS mm-hmm. National Tour. Let's take a listen to it. Um, it was a Friday night. Great racing between Tony Stewart, Aaron Reitzel, and uh, Terry McCarl. Uh, the racing boys, our buddies, had the call. Brian Holbert was the announcer. That's our Dry Dean Diesel All Deftifying Move of the Week. And now for the Dry Dean Deftifying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Battling at the front of the field, second, third, and fourth, all up for grabs right now. Stewart, McCarl, and Reitzel all duking it out. Stewart gets by both of them through turns one and two. They both come back after him in turns three and four. Stewart reports to the outside. McCarl down to the bottom. Reitzel's going to look lower than him, nearly three wide to the front straightway. Stewart's going to hold on to it. That deft defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts for our See Better Drive Safer sale. Right now, get a $15 gift card after mail-in rebate when you purchase select Sylvania bulbs for your headlights. Plus, earn double O rewards points. Visit your professional parts people today at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. For over 50 years, drivers in sprint car, midget, micro, modified, and even dirt lay model have taken the checkered flag on weld racing wheels. Legendary drivers like Joe Saldana, Carl, Mark, and Steve Kinzer, Doug Wolfgang, and countless other racers have trusted weld racing wheels for their superior strength and lightweight construction to finish ahead of the competition. With 50 years of race-winning engineering and technology, American-made weld racing wheels are designed and built to withstand virtually any abuse you throw at them. Weld racing, proven speed. Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in designing and manufacturing purpose-built application-specific hydraulic cylinders with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger. 
crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. AggressiveHydraulics.com the world's largest selection of sprint car merchandise. SprintCarStuff.com. Diecasts, t-shirts, clothing, photographs, prints, and much more. Gifts for you or the sprint car fan in your life. SprintCarStuff.com has it. And all proceeds benefit the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Next time you're looking for sprint car stuff, remember SprintCarStuff.com. Your online home for any and all sprint car gifts and collectibles. 10 tours, over 200 nights of racing. The American Sprint Car Series is back for its 28th year. Whether you're enjoying the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series National Tour at Williams Grove, Eagle Raceway, Skagit Speedway, or any of the nine ASCS regional tours across Arizona, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and beyond, winged and even non-winged, there's a race happening near you. Check online for schedule details at ASCSRacing.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And when you can't be there live, catch the National Tour and select regional events on RacingBoys.com. I'm Paul McMahon. One has a degree in engineering, the other has a degree in beer consumption. Sign, figure out who has wicked Wing Nation on MRN.com. Thank you, Paul. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Let's go to the Red Brand Fence Hotline, fresh off from claiming the first championship uh, in the King of the West series, the uh, NARC Tour. Uh, DJ Nettles on the line. Hello, DJ. Welcome into Wing Nation, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate well, it. Congratulations! Tell us, uh, tell us what it was like Saturday night claiming that championship. Uh, it, it felt great to pull that off for uh, my dad and uncle, who has, uh, gave us great equipment all year. And it was a dog fight till the end. Uh, we went in Saturday night, <clears throat> tied with Bud, and Dominic was right there as well, with seven points behind. So it, it could have went either way for anybody. Um, qualifying, it was it was a huge. You set to the whole night. I believe we qualified third, so that gave us a two-point advantage over Bud. And uh, we were able to make it through our heat race. It was a little skeptical there the first lap about got taken out, but uh, made it through that. And then uh, just went into the dash and had a good starting spot in the dash and jumped into second in the feature and uh, just kind of was riding there and <clears throat> trying to be careful in lap traffic and try not to make any mistakes to get together the lap car. And uh, we made a mistake and uh, lost a spot and fell into third and just had to remind myself to, you know, think of the bigger picture here and just, just get through this and just ride it out. And, and we were able to pull it off. So it, it was a great night and uh, happy we were able to pull it off. And then we celebrated afterwards with, with Bud and Dominic. And we all stayed there till about 2.30 in the morning having a little more fun than we probably should have before the banquet <laughs> the next day. But so that's part of it. You know, we compete all year long, but at the end of the day, we're, we're all good friends and we celebrated and it was a great time. That's awesome. Congratulations, DJ, on the championship. During that feature, were you aware of where Bud and Dominic were? Like, I don't know if their track has a scoreboard or anything, but under cautions, or were you just really doing your own thing? Well, there's That's the thing about Stockton. There's no scoreboard. There's nothing. You don't even know what lap it is um, under caution. So uh, I had no idea where they were at. Um, I, I, the, the race director kept letting us know lap count on every caution, and uh, – I had no idea, and I just knew that I just had to keep running my own race and, and stay clean. And every time on the green flag, there I would hear someone get to my inside, and they were really trying it hard. So I figured out oh, that might be Dominic, so or Bud. But I just kind of just stayed to my own and tried to try to limit my mistakes, and hopefully that just kept me separated from them. DJ, you said something there when you when you made the mistake and went back to third. Then you said you had to think about big picture racing. How challenging is it? you're a sprint car driver you're you're you you live your entire life with passing that guy in front of you how challenging is it to big picture race in a situation like that that was very challenging because for me i don't i don't really look at big picture like that and i just want to drive as hard as i can every lap and, and give it my all but i knew that you know in the end that, that that's what we were there to do and we wanted to pull that off and and it was hard to pass that night as it was. And so I, I, I gold, it kind of was setting a toward pace and, and he was in a league of his own. So I knew I wasn't going to probably get to gold, unless something happened in traffic. So I just had to remind myself, like, Hey, you have to, you have to, you have to finish this race and you, you just got to settle in where you're at. Mm. 
you know, every driver we talk to that's in a points battle says how much they, they don't think about the points. They just want to <laughs> race the race and win the race and race like normal. So you have that mindset going up until the last lap, and then you, you win it. How, like, how what does the emotions go from you're, you're not worried about it, you're not worrying about it, and then you're like, oh, wow, I can really enjoy this. I actually just won this points battle. Yeah, I mean, when I took that checkered flag, it was just like a sign of relief, like, wow, we, we did it. We, we won this deal. And, and it, really had, it really didn't set in until the next day when we were at the banquet and you know, to see the trophies and, and see the board and the presentation and, and everything. And my family was all there with me. And it, it really didn't set in until then. Like, I was just, I'm still like, you know, and then looking through the past previous champions. I mean, Brent Kidding's won this championship 14 times. And he's been super inspirational with me. And, and uh, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago at Tulare, I, I took a very bad accident. And I hit the fence really hard, and uh, I was unconscious for a little bit. And I woke up in the ambulance, and the first person I could see is Brent Kading sitting there with me. So it was cool to be there with him. And, and like I said, it, it didn't set in until then, really. Like, even even on the front stretch doing the interviews and everything, it, it, it didn't hit home until the next day. And, and uh, just it, it was a great feeling. I can only imagine, especially overcoming – Overcoming that injury there at uh, Tulare. Uh, DJ Netter was our guest here on Wing Nation. He joins us on the Red Brand Fence Hotline. DJ, you had such an interesting season, okay? 17 top 10 finishes in 19 races. The irony of it is, is not one of them was a win. Is there, now that you've won the big prize, is there is there anything you look back and say, man, we could have got a win here, we could have done this, or you, you you obviously need to be content with this season, but is there is there any that got away that you wish you could have back again? Yeah, about midsummer, I think it was June. Uh, we were at Stockton, and I had I had a great run going. I think we charged from like twelfth to second, and I reeled the leader in. I was right behind him, and you know there was only like five to go, and getting ready to slide him, and we broke a nozzle line off and oh. and dropped the cylinder, and it was just. There was a couple times, you know, I, I put myself in position and, and I just, we weren't able to capitalize whether it was something like that. And looking back now that, you know, that night I was very frustrated that, you know, man, we broke the nozzle line off and, but, you know, we still finished. We finished second that night with seven cylinders. And I, and I, I can't be more grateful about that because, you know, that, that ultimately led us to where we're at today. But yeah, there was a couple of times that I wish I would have capitalized and, and, and did a little bit more, a little different. But in the end, it paid itself off. And next year, I would like, you know, obviously to win a couple more races. But uh, in the end, this this thing is so tough. And there there's so many good cars between, you know, Dominic, Bud, myself, Willie, Shane. Anyone could win any night. Mm-hmm. So you just have to keep yourself in that position because there there is – the points are so critical between, you know, the key is qualifying grid and, and limiting your bad night and making your bad night your worst night not having DNFs and, and just being there every single night. That That's the biggest part of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you did it, and you won the big prize. DJ, you talked about the competition level. Uh, it's something we've talked about all year. It seems like California sprint car racing is on the up. It's more competitive. The 360s are going strong. That said, you talked about partying with some of your biggest competitors until 2.30 in the morning. How, how neat is that to race that competitively but still enjoy each other off the track? I think that's something that's been lacking for a few years out here. You know, everybody would just be so competitive and and not really, you know, realize at the end of the year that, you know, we, we spend so much of our time with each other every weekend and, and, you know, yes, things get heated throughout the year and, and people may have a disagreement, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's one big family, you know, these, these are basically your closest friends. You're with them every weekend. And so, I think that was so fun, and, and everybody had a great time, and, and I think that's a factor in keeping the camaraderie going out here, and, and you know that that makes us ultimately more competitive because we want to be one another even more because we each want to be that person at the end of the year, but in the end, we still were able to celebrate together. Neat, neat, neat stuff. Final question for you here before we wrap it up. You mentioned your father, your uncle, uh, give you a great race car. And, and I think I've read about this a little bit. Your race team, boy, I'm telling you what, it is it is the definition of a family race team. And and when you're, and, and granted, it's the it's the Cating family, it's the Selzy family that are well entrenched in motorsports. I mean, you, there is, there's got to be some pride that the Neto family went toe-to-toe with them and, 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 and got the top spot. 
No, it is. You know, that that was a huge, just to see the look on my dad and uncle's face, that, you know, they have spent so much time and money to, to develop our team into what it is and build it up, our engine program and, and everything else along the way. And, and you know, to see them so relieved that, you know, they, they were able to go toe-to-toe with Ross and Williams and, and everybody else throughout the year, and we were able to come out on top. And, you know, that was relieving to them because they, they, they ultimately love sprint car racing as well. And, they're the, re- they're the reason why I started racing because they loved racing and they put me in my first race car and to be able to do it with them. And it's just a family deal. And we, we all love to go there and we all have regular jobs and we just go and have fun and it is what it is. And they'll ultimately come out on top and, and we all went back to work on Monday, but it's, it's just a greater feeling. No, we, we conquered the 410 championship. Absolutely. You certainly did. And congratulations on that. We appreciate the time. I know you got a few more 360 races left before the end of the year, and we wish you the best on those. But uh, savor this championship, and, uh, and, and we wish you the best as you move forward. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on, and uh, have a good day. There we go. DJ Neto joining us there. Yeah, a couple of things there. Um, I, I, I mentioned the, the Selzy name and the Kading name. Um, DJ kind of was like the Roth name, yeah, because that's who Selzy was driving yeah. for. Maury Williams' team, which is who Bud was driving yeah. for. You're right to put the Neto name with Williams, with Roth, with Selzy, with Kading. Yeah, that's it's pretty good, sporting. It's good company. It's good company. You know, the other thing we were, we've talked about this, and and one of the things I and I think I talked to Brent about this, Brent Kading about this, is that when you look at California sprint car racing and you look at how good it is, and yet Geo Selzy. Carson Macedo, Rico Abreu, Buddy Kofoid are all yeah. very, very recent California kids. Could you imagine if if they could lure more of those guys to stay, stay home? Stay home. Whew. You think about that. Yeah. When you think about the, 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 the racing is spectacular. The outlaw carts are out there, what they're building, what yeah. they're growing, the young talent. And I just and I just sat here, I just sat here and wrote this down. We know here. There's, there's plenty there, more. There's yeah. no yeah, there's twenty more that got away. Yep. You know, I mean, this goes back to Larson, and and it started was like remember years ago when everyone wanted to be the next Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Well, what we had now is everyone wanted to be the next Kyle Larson. Yep. 100%. And and so all these California kids come up and they're talented, and 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 it's a challenge. And I know Brent and I've talked about this with 410 racing in California, the limited number of it, the 360 programs, and everything else. But it's so good, and yet you throw you throw those four other names and and other yeah. ones into it. Man, oh man. And stuff. just can think what's coming up in the future. What's coming in the future, because yeah. it's phenomenal. It truly is. That is for sure. Uh, congratulations. Uh, when I went out to Ocean, I met DJ and his family. Just great people. He gave me a shirt. Wear it every once in a while. Yeah. Love my DJ Saw Neto you shirt. sporting it for your run the other day. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, love uh, love that. So, uh, really happy to see him win the championship. Uh, we need to step away. Uh, when we come back, Sam Hafer, Team Jr., another champion. He joins us next. Sage Fruit is a high-quality grower, packer, and shipper of Washington State apples, pears, and cherries. Sage Fruit believes in sprint car racing as a proud sponsor of sprint cars for the past 16 years and a partner of Wing Nation for the past four years. We love sprint car racing, and we're there for our sprint car fans. Sage Fruit works hard to deliver an exceptional eating experience. We value our relationship with sprint car fans and appreciate your continued support of Sage Fruit. Ask for Sage Fruit at your local grocer. No matter what or where you race, Hefner Racing Products and HRP Wings has you covered. Check out the premier Shark Wing as well as other Sprint Car Wings and components. Sprint Car, Mini and Micro Sprint Wings. And the HRP Original Recess Rivet Wing. All HRP Wings are wind tunnel tested. HRP carries a full line of affordable, top of the line, USA built Sprint Car components. Shop online for all this and more at hrpracing.com. The racer's choice. Hefner Racing Products and HRP Wings. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts for our See Better, Drive Safer sale. Right now, get a $15 gift card after mail-in rebate when you purchase a pair of Bosch Focus or Trico Titan wiper blades. We'll even install them for free. Plus, you'll earn double O rewards points. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. 
here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. This is Shane Stewart. I was wondering why Bigfoot sightings happen whenever Steve Post is in town. Now I know. It is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. We're having a ball. And I'm telling you what, a guy that's having a ball now, <laughs> locked down that Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour Championship at Texas this weekend. Uh, speaking of Texas, Texas native Sam Hayford Team Jr. joins us on the Red Brand Fence Hotline. Hello, Sam. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Well, I appreciate you guys having me back on again. Well, Sam, we were chatting a little bit during the break, and I'm going to kind of restate the question that I said to you. <laughs> About two months ago, we crowned you the champion. Then you went to Lucas Oil Speedway and had just a miserable race, found yourself second in the points. Uh, but, boy, you guys bounced back spectacularly after that rough weekend. There's got to be a lot of pride in it. Yeah, you want to flog everybody. You want to win every race. But there's got to be a lot of pride in bouncing back strong after a rough weekend uh, and, and, and getting that crown. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those deals where, you know, we got back in a position where we were earlier in the year where, we got way behind early in the in the year, and you know, try to find ourselves in the same position there with about you know five or six races left. And, and uh, you know, we like I say, being in that position several times throughout my last four years of winning, still, you know, it's we haven't always been in the point lead every every race. So uh, we we kind of knew what to do. We knew what was expected of us, and uh, you know, we really we really capitalized very well. You know, my guys that did their job. I did my job, and, and uh, you know, everything worked out well. Four consecutive championships in a row. When you look back at all four, uh, they both have to, or they all have to have a, a different feel to it. Uh, what, what, how would you, like, describe this championship versus the last three? You know, this one, I felt like our car was probably the fastest we've ever been this year. You know, I felt like overall speed, fastest we've ever been. But, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of areas in there where, you know, we weren't we weren't finishing out races very strong. You know, had some bad luck here and there. And, and, and in years past, you know, to be honest, we really hadn't had a lot of bad luck. So we we encountered a lot of bad luck this year, but we also had so much speed that you know it kind of made up for it. You know, my first two years winning the championship, I felt like it was just total domination. And you know, the last two years, you know, we've had we've had some struggles here and there. And and uh, you know, but with the speed of our race car, we we've been able to capitalize and and. Uh, you know, and, and still win the point. Yeah, you know, you talk about that, and the speed of your race car is obviously a big factor in it. Um, where's the Where's the national tour as far as depth of competition, level of competition at this point? We we lost, and the reason I ask this question, we lost. You know, Johnny Herrera and Wayne and Wayne Johnson were just guys that were always there, and they came off the tour, and yet the, 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 those kids and those youngsters certainly made you work hard. What's What's the What's the level like on the national tour now? Uh, you know, I think it's it's just as strong as it's always been. You know, you you've got plenty of guys out there that can get the job done. You know, we we've, we've got guys that you know, uh, I don't know. We've had quite a few different winners this year. Um, yeah, you, know, you got guys like Scott Baguski won the last race. Uh, John Carney's, I think, probably. You know, I think he's one of the better guys. Just going through first year struggles being on the tour. Uh, you know, Blake Hahn, obviously. You know, he's been he's been getting better in the last three or four years and. And their team's really starting to come together now. Uh, you know, Matt Covington's been a staple there for quite a while. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Seth Bergman kind of bounce back into this year, you know, after we're gone. But, I mean, the the, the, the level of talent there is, is definitely unbelievable. Uh, you know, and then Roger Crockett, he, he finished out the year really, really strong. So, you know, you, you've got a lot of guys that, you know, have potential out there. And, and uh, you know, when you get a guy like, say Aaron Reitzel and Wayne Johnson and Johnny Herrera leave, you, know, you got to have people fill their shoes. And, and uh, I definitely feel like, you know, the ASCS has those people. For sure. Sam, you teamed up with the Hills Racing Team a few years back, and now you've given them, the, I think, their second championship. Uh, I got to know them a little bit when I was racing ESS way back in the day. Great family. Uh, were they there this weekend, and how neat was it to be able to give them two of these championships? 
Yeah, they're they're there every weekend. You know, Miles and Dan, they don't they don't miss a race. It's, it's pretty neat to see that. Uh, you know, just the support that they have for our race team. It, you know, it's unbelievable. And and uh, you know, we just keep pushing forward every year. You know, if he's if he he asks me if there's something that we need to get better, and and uh, you know, if I tell him, yeah, we need to do this and this, you know, he doesn't. He really doesn't question my. Uh, my opinion on it on a lot of things and uh you know with that we've been able to build a really strong team the last two two years yeah boy i'll say really really stout that's for sure uh we've caught you uh, in route, uh, because while the championship celebration, the confetti is uh, confetti has been slung and everything else. Um, you're headed this way. You're headed to Charlotte to the World Finals. Uh, did, where are you at with your 410 program at this point? Getting the chance to to stretch your legs out with that this weekend here in Charlotte. But uh, and I know you've ran some according uh, uh, over the course of this year. Um, how is that program in your in your operation going? Uh, you know, I think we've we've been building our motor program up the you know the last year and a half uh you know slowly but surely uh we we probably haven't got to run as many 410 races as we would have liked to by now but uh you know now after after the four championship there you know i think we're really going to start you know setting our sights on the 410 program and and uh you know seeing seeing how we can fare with that deal i mean i I feel like you know we just need some time you know and and, uh you know we'll be right where we need to be I, i don't i don't feel like we're we're behind on our motor program. I just feel like there's some things, you know, with the race car that you obviously we got to do different, you know, running the 410 deal. So, uh, you know, time will tell, you know, we'll run Charles this weekend, see where we stack up and, and uh, you know, just go from there. Sam, you mentioned a lot this year, the 410 racing. Um, I know you just said that you're going to kind of see where you go, but ha- do you have any th- er- initial thoughts about what you might do schedule wise for next season? Uh, you know, we're going to, you know, me and Miles and Pam, we're going to sit down and talk to, talk about it, you know, over, uh, over his company Christmas dinner, uh, you know, here, here in the next month or so. And, and we'll sit down and, and, you know, hammer something out and, and figure out exactly what everybody wants to do and, and what's in the best interest of everybody. And, you know, after we do that, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have an, an idea. But as of right now, you know, we can't really say for sure one thing that we're going to do. We're just, uh, we know for sure it's going to involve a lot more 410 races, for sure. Uh, we just don't know the exact amount right now. Mm, good stuff. That is for sure. Well, Sam, congratulations on the championship. We really love the fact that we're going to get a chance to see mm-hmm. you race this weekend here in Charlotte. We wish you the best as you travel this way. And uh, we'll talk to you this weekend, but thanks for the time here on Wing Nation today. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, like I said, it's always fun being on the show. There we go. Sam Hafer, Team Jr. joining us there on the program. And I think that's the, I think that's the neat thing. And he mentioned a name there. And, and I think that when you look at a tour that has guys like Johnny Herrera and Wayne Johnson that are etched in there for years yep. and years and years, and you lose them and it's like, well, what's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. Well, how's this going to go? But then when you see the drivers that have taken over, yeah. and it's really, really good, Sam, Sam, and, and, and here's the reality. If he runs the ASCS National Tour, or if he doesn't run the National Tour, we're going to say when we lost Reitzel, Herrera, yeah. Wayne Johnson, and Sam Hayford yeah. Jr., yep. because he's now that category. Oh, without he's a that doubt. that guy that you have. And that just means that someone else will jump up there yep, and be good step because up. it's a great program. It's a great tour. He mentioned Seth Bergman, okay, and we lost Seth Bergman yeah. last year. He last year was running early in the season, was off to leading the points and everything. Um, I was listening to Racing Boys on uh, Friday night, and he was home this year. He ran a very limited schedule up in the Northwest, but I think they said he started a coffee shop. Wow. So I've got to find that out now. Yeah, he has Buddy the dog, the dog. No, uh, is no, is that Buddy? It was Wall? Might have been Wally. The dog. They found the dog at Walmart. Okay, and so they rescued a dog, and we talked about that last yeah. year on Mav TV show. But I, but I was like midway through the show, I'm like, what happened to him? Yeah, I, and I was and then he showed up at Texas, and as Sam says, it sounds like he might be around a little yeah. bit more. So, um, but I but I, the racing boy said he started a coffee shop. Very cool. Isn't that awesome? I know. Oh, Food and beverage, right up your Food right up and your beverage, alley. exactly. So, uh, appreciate Sam joining us here. Hercules Tires going to give away a free set of tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. You could be our November set of uh, tire winners. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Since the dawn of American industry, Drydeen was there as the country built its first roads, laid the blocks of its factories, and spanned rivers with new bridges and rails. Today, with Drydeen's all technology, we instill this heritage into every Drydeen oil, lubricant, fluid, and deft product we make. 
Drydeen is a tradition of performance with 21st century technology. Drydeen, official motor oil of the world of outlaws and always American owned and operated. Visit drydeen.com for more information. Looking for custom race wear and embroidery? Do you want your race fans to represent your race team with trendy original apparel? Contact Classic Ink USA, the new standard in custom screen printing and embroidery. Located in Greater Pittsburgh, Classic Ink USA's professional staff utilizes state-of-the-art facilities to transform your ideas into an attractive wearable piece. From custom track swag race wear to trendy quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink handles it all. Find out how you can get started. Contact Classic Ink USA screen printing and embroidery at the track and on your back. Red Brand Fence, safe, durable, dependable, and long-lasting. Whether it's keeping horses, cattle, and livestock in or stopping predators, Red Brand is the best fence money can buy. Each inch of the woven wire is inspected for top quality before it's crowned with the trademark red top wire. Red Brand Fence, the most trusted name in agriculture, residential, and commercial fence for over a century. For more information, go to redbrand.com. I'm Terry McCarl. One has a World of Outlaws win and has made the A-Main of the Knoxville Nationals. The other was the first one in line at the breakfast buffet once, or many times. Wing Nation with Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Well, Cowboy Terry McCarl bringing us back. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming to Charlotte. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're going to see T-Mac this week. Oh, you bet. All of our, all of our rowdy friends are yeah. coming over this week, yeah. It's going to be it, a, a oh, good, good crowd. Oh, oh, World Finals is yeah. going to be off the, off the hinges. I mean, it's going to be crazy. Uh, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum birthday calendar. Uh, birthdays Monday, Alan Brown, Don Ward, Kenny Weld would have had a birthday on Monday. Later this week, J.W. Hunt, Galen Fox, Art Bish Sr., Granville Buster Warkey. Okay, but today would have been the birthday of Hyman, Hiram Hillegas. Okay? Now, I, I know I would butcher that name, and I probably did. No, he's a 1997 inductee into the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. When I look at where we're at with sprint car racing now, and when I read about this guy, I'm like, you know, we have so many friends that build these cars. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jack and Bonnie Elam from yep. J and J. Uh, I like I, I like Ron and the boys out at Mus- uh, with uh, with Maxim chassis. Yep. We get a chance, and we get to know all of these people and their friends. But a lot of the stuff started with guys like Hiram Hillegas, and I believe I, I I know I've butchered that name. Um, in 1910, he started working in a sheet metal plant. In 1919, he built his first sprint car, and he built sprint cars through the 20s, through the, the Depression and everything else. 1935, he was working in Syracuse, New York, at the mm. Carrier Corporation, and he started to build sprint cars and midget cars and big cars, and the key to his cars were standardization of parts and duplication of pieces. Yeah. So you think about how that came into play. Old Hiram's the, Hiram's the one that put that into play. The early 1940s, he moved to Allentown, and his shop became a mecca for everything from midget cars to big cars. And in 1950s, he started to develop the tube frame, and they just became the wow. standard of excellence. In the 50s, his cars. And what that brought was 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 repeatability in chassis, yep. but also durability. Yeah. Some of his cars back in the day were running 20 years. Wow. It's unreal that they did it. And, 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 and Hiram passed away in 1960. But, I mean, just another amazing story mm-hmm. of a guy that we don't ever talk about yep. because he was building the cars, not driving the cars. But that's the beauty of the Sprint Car Hall of sure Fame and Museum. It's, it's, we love our drivers, but it's more than just drivers. Mm-hmm. And it's because of guys like Hiram Hillegas um, that are in the Hall of Fame in 1997 inductee. I love that stuff. I really, really do. Okay. What I also love is what's getting ready to happen here. Okay. Batten down the hatches, folks. And it starts now. Okay. Tonight, Millbridge Speedway. And tomorrow night, the Toyota Racing Development Micro Show. They had nearly 40 cars out there last night. Okay, um, Reitzel's out there with a the car. Is he really? Mike, yeah, Reitzel's out there. I watched, I went on there like a Facebook Live post and I watched him run hot laps. I know this may shock you. He was right up on the against fence. the fence. Yeah, he was on the <laughs> fence. Okay. Tonight, 2,000 to win for wingless micro sprints. Tomorrow, 5,000 to win, win for the winged micro sprints. They had practice last night. You got all of these micro drivers. Yeah. I got Alex Bright coming down from Pennsylvania. You got all of these guys. And the fastest in both divisions 
was a guy that has never ran a micro sprint in his life, Carson Quaffle, Travis's boy. Really? I am telling wow. you, folks, I am telling you, mark it down today, November, whatever the date is. Fifth. Fifth, Redhead Day. <laughs> Somebody better keep an eye on these yeah. Quaffle boys, both of them, Carson and Caden. I am telling you, these boys, wow. Travis Quaffle's a truck series champion yeah. and a great super late model racer from Wisconsin. I am telling you, the apple didn't fall far from the tree wow. with race car talent. These boys are just stout. So can't wait to get out there and see that. Uh, if you want to follow along, Speed 51 has the coverage. Okay, tomorrow, Wednesday, 11 o'clock, our buddy Greg Wilson is going to be at uh, Griffin Tire, Little Rock Road in Charlotte, 11 to 3. They're going to have food. And food. Food. So I'm going over there. I'm going to go no, see my buddy. you're going to I know. Well, there's going to be food there. Tires and food? Yeah, food. Exactly. So uh, that kicks it off. Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, the Can-Am World Finals kickoff party, the Pavilion of Z-Max Dragway, food, drinks, and music, Dirty Grass Soul, and our buddy Lenny Baticki with the PRNs at the track is going to be there uh, doing a bunch of driver interviews, not only as sprint car guys, but modified guys and late model guys. Because Thursday, it really starts to kick up. Now, Thursday at 1130 at Iron Thunder, which is right over near there, uh, story time with Bobby Allen. Our, the McLean boys are hosting this one. Oh, boy. And they're doing story time with Bobby Allen. And then, of course, Thursday night is qualifying night for the World of Outland NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. Okay, and then Friday and Saturday night are the big racing programs over at the Can-Am World Finals. Here is our HRP Racing upcoming calendar. Okay, Thursday, we have our Wing Nation podcast during the day with Brad Doty. Okay, then Friday and Saturday, 3 o'clock at the Fan Zone, all of your favorite drivers will be there. Dry Dean Wing Nation Race Day in the Fan Zone, 3 o'clock, right when gates mm-hmm. open. Oh, oh, it's going to be epic. We're going to have music. <laughs> we're going to have giveaways. We might even sing a song or two. Dancing. Dancing. Oh, my gosh. Now, listen to this one. Saturday morning, 11 a.m., Dry Dean Wing Nation Legends Live from the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It's all about racing legends. Ray Evernham, NASCAR Hall of Famer, class of 2018. Tony Stewart, NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee, going to be inducted in 2020 next uh, in January. Guests include Bobby Allen, Billy Pouch, Dave Blaney, and more. So you're going to want to do that. Hall of Fame opens at 10. Go down there, spend an hour at the Hall of Fame. Come into the Great Hall. Watch our program, Story Hour, with Tony and Ray and Bobby and Billy and Dave and who knows who else. And um, we're going to do that and then uh, and then tour the rest of the Hall of Fame and then make your way to the dirt track. So the Hall of Fame in Charlotte is phenomenal. It really, truly is. Saturday on Wing Nation by Sage Fruit on MAV TV, Ashley Stremme and I are going to hang out with one of the young guns mm-hmm. of the sport. Buddy Kofoid is going to join us. So... I mean, we have got you. Our HRP racing calendar is just loaded up. Of course, we go from loaded up to about uh, non-existent. So, uh, but it is good stuff. That is for sure. Follow along all week long. Thanks to DJ Nuno and Sam Hafer Team Jr. for joining us. Wing Nation has been brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Watch Wing Nation Saturday mornings on MAV TV. You can also find Wing Nation on wingnation.com or your favorite podcast provider. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.